I hope there is not too much disturbance in the background, but I will try to do my best at reading this. An exempt of John Grisham's Ford County stories, Fetching Raymond. Mr. McBride ran his upholstery shop in the old ice house on Lee Street, a few blocks off the square in downtown Clanton. To haul the sofas and chairs back and forth, he used a white Ford cargo van with McBride upholstery stenciled in the thick black letters above a phone number and address on Lee. The van always clean and never in a hurry was a common sight in Clanton, and Mr. McBride was fairly well known because he was the only upholsterer in town. He rarely lent his van to anyone, though the requests were more frequent than he would have liked. His usual response was a polite, no, I have some deliveries. He said yes to Leon Graney, though, and did so for two reasons. First, the circumstances surrounding the request were quite unusual, and second, Leon's boss at the lamp factory was Mr. McBride's third cousin. Small town relationships being what they are, Leon Graney arrived at the upholstery shop as scheduled at 4 o'clock on a hot Wednesday afternoon in late July. Most of Ford County was listening to the radio and it was widely known that things were not going well for the Graney family. Mr. McBride walked with Leon to the van, handed over the key and said, you take care of it now. Leon took the key and said, I'm much obliged. I filled up the tank. Should be plenty to get you there and back. How much do I owe? Mr. McBride shook his head and spat on the gravel beside the van. Nothing. It's on me. Just bring it back with a full tank. I'd feel, um, I'd feel better if I could pay something, Leon protested. No. Well, thank you then. I need it back by noon tomorrow. It will be here. Mind if I leave my truck? Me, Leon nodded to an old Japanese pickup wedged between two cars across the lot. That will be fine. Leon opened the door and got inside the van. He started the engine, adjusted the seat and the mirrors. Mr. McBride walked to the driver's door, lit an unfiltered cigarette and watched Leon. You know, some folks don't like this, he said. Thank you, but most folks around here don't care, Leon replied. He was preoccupied and not in the mood for small talk. Me, I think it's wrong. Thank you. It'll be back before noon, Leon said softly, then backed away and disappeared down the street. He settled into the seat, tested the brakes, slowly gunned the engine to check the power. Twenty minutes later, he was far from Clanton, deep in the hills of northern Ford County. Out from the settlement of Pleasant Ridge, the road became gravel, the homes smaller and further apart. Leon turned into a short driveway that stopped at a box-like house with weeds at the doors and an asphalt shingle roof in need of replacement. It was the grainy home, the place he'd been raised along with his brothers, the only constant in their sad and chaotic lives. A jerry-rigged plywood ramp ran to the side door so that his mother, Ines Grainy, could come and go in her wheelchair. By the time Leon turned off the engine, the side door was open and Innes was rolling out and onto the ramp. Behind her was the hulking mass of her middle son, Butch, who still lived with his mother because he'd never lived anywhere else, at least not in the free world. Sixteen of his forty-six years had been behind bars and he looked the part of the career criminal. Long ponytail, studs in his ears, all manners of facial hair, massive biceps, and a collection of cheap tattoos a prison artist had sold him for cigarettes. In spite of his past, Butch handled his mother and her wheelchair with great tenderness and care, speaking softly to her as they negotiated the ramp. Leon watched and waited, 
then walked to the rear of the van and opened its do double doors. He and Butch gently lifted their mother up and sat her inside the van. Butch pa pushed her forward to the console that separated the two bucket seats bolted into the floor. Leon latched the wheelchair into place with strips of packing twine someone at McBride's had left in the van. And when Innes was secure, her boys got settled in their seats. The journey began. Within minutes, they were back on the asphalt and headed for a long night.